Cauê, não. Dude, let's shred, man. Long Dong, what you been up to, baby? What you been up to? How's your studying going? Jatin, what's going on? Hey, Bogues, I'll see you Thursday. For any of you guys that are in Los Angeles, let me know. Uh, I think me and Bagesh and uh, the Birdman, uh, we're getting together. You know, beers, beers on my, the hookers are on you. <laughs> Just kidding. All right, all right. Yeah, I'm at my sister's place. Good. Man, it's good to have everybody in here. Man, we got shit to do. Mr. Williams, what's going on? That's awesome. Cool. MB, what up, what up, what up? Well, happy Easter. Happy Passover. Happy Good Friday. Happy Ramadan. Happy Holy. And I think that's it, right? I think we got we got everybody so far. <laughs> this is a very special day. So happy to everybody on everything. And uh, man, we got a lot of stuff to do. The market was really heated up on Friday. So let's uh, let's get to work. And then, uh, you know, from there, we'll see what the heck is, what the heck is going on. All right. So let's get to work. We got a lot of things to talk about. Market's looking juicy. We do have some cross currents that are coming in the market. But beyond that, like, man, I think that there's a lot of positivity going in too. So Man, let's get into it. We know the drill, right? You guys have been doing this a long time. We know the drill. So first thing that we always want to do, guys, when we look at the markets, right, and we're kind of trying to gauge, like, what the heck is going on? What do we? What is going on underneath the hood of the market? The first thing that we want to do is look at the general market indexes to see where the strength is, where the weaknesses are, and, you know, most importantly, like, where should we be concentrating our efforts, right? So the first thing that we always want to be doing is take a look at the market indexes. If anybody does not have these indexes, just let me know. I'll, I'll send them to you uh, via TC2000 or just copy and paste the, copy and paste the tick ass, the tick ass, all right? So first thing we want to do, so I always do, so I like to put sort columns sort columns into all my scans, all my watch lists on TC2000 for a specific reason. Sort columns will give you just a very quick way of organizing big groups of lists. And I think that's really, really important, right? Like, how do you take big groups of lists, especially in a market that's so diverse with so many cross currents? And then, right, how do you like narrow certain things down? So I like to use sort lists. Uh, and sort functions to just take like these kind of big lists and then turn them into something. So I want to take my index list. I'd like to do a five-day sort. And the reason I do five-day sort is because obviously today's Sunday. It's a Sunday huddle. We want to see where the heat is from last week, right? Like where is the juice coming in from the market? Like where do we want to concentrate our efforts? So first thing that we notice is 13.27% on the T2108. This is a TC2000 market breadth indicator. And essentially what it means is like the percentage stocks over its 40-day moving average. Why they don't use the 50-day, I don't know. It's a TC2000 thing. But one thing that we did see last week was that market breadth had a, it had a, a pretty big jump. So guys, market breadth is the, right, the measure of what is happening underneath the hood of the market? So when you have like market indexes, right? It's like Apple, Google, so on and so forth. Like if those are having a big day, then like you feel like the market is having a big day, but that's not actually the case, right? What we wanna always understand is like what's happening underneath the hood of the market. What's happening underneath the hood of the market in terms of like just regular stocks, right? Because the market is a market of stocks. It is not just Apple, Google, and Tesla, right? Like, you know, obviously, if you turn on your water stream, then it always just looks like you know, the only thing anybody cares about is Tesla. But there are other stocks out there, and they have to be, right, looked at. So we can see the T2108 up 13%. You know, on, on top of that, right, the TMS. This is your 
20-year treasury yields. So the bond market itself is looking like it wants to break out. And this is actually interesting. So yields are dropping, right? And one of the biggest things that has been a market driver of the last year and a half has been yields, right? And so we are at a key resistance spot that I think is something that we're going to have to be monitoring very, very closely because not only are we at basically a trend line breakout over here, but beyond that, we have our 200 day moving average just sitting right on top of this. And so this is an inflection point that is going to have to be really, really monitored because, you know, this if this thing starts to crash back down into this, you know, back into the range that that's going to put some sell pressure on into the market. If this and right, we're on like day five, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven of the move. But, um, you know, if we have a couple rest days here and then break out then that's actually going to be probably a positive for the market. And you can see here, right? Like we need, you know, the market's been drifting down for right about a year and a half, two years. And so we have this kind of breakout on this, right? And, and bonds start to go up and the yields start to go down, so on and so forth. That's going to be a boost into the market. And so this is something, you know, it's not something I sit there and trade, but it is something like we want to keep an alert on this bad boy, right? And, you know, you can use on your TC does you just put alert like, you can hit this 200 day moving average. You can actually add in conditions or alerts like right at the specific moving averages, which is like a cool thing about 2000. Or, you know, if you don't want to do that, if you're just like, right, you can just right click and set an alert at a trend line and that'll do it too. And so like, you know, I always keep like an alert box up that has like kind of all the different alerts. Hey, this one's at the 50 day moving average. This thing is over here. This one is breaking out a flat top breakup. And what that will do is it allows it so that you don't have to sit there and like watch like a thousand stocks, especially ones that are not ready now. When you're making your watch list for the next week, what you want to be doing is like what stocks are ready to right now versus right what what needs a little bit of marination to get going, right? So the alerts will really help you with that. You know, so that's something to keep in mind of. Um, oil, right? So oil had a big week. I mean, you can see here, oil had a really monster cock rally uh, and sitting right at the 200-day moving average. Now, a lot of people are like oil fanboys and stuff like that because of the inflation narrative or whatever. But in reality, right, like oil's been in a downtrend for almost a year, right, since June of last year. Um, since June of last year, we've been in a downtrend. Whether this comes out of this downtrend channel, you know, we can call this a channel, but the, whether it comes out of this is not as to be undecided, right? You know, theoretically, anytime oil does get hot, it does come screaming back down. So a lot of times because like we're breakout traders or trend traders, you know, we start to see something go up and we get excited, right? We're like, oh, this thing is about to bust loose. But in general, every time oil has looked like that, it's come kind of crashing back down. So we'll have to kind of keep an eye on this. Um, there are a couple of oil stocks I am watching and I do have some alerts set, you know, if we start to come out of this, you know, channel, I think that would be, um, you know, that would be bullish for oil stocks and oil in general, right? And you can see here, you're like marinating right at that uh, 200 day moving average. So if you start to kind of come out of this zone, that's also going to be something that's a positive for oil. I will say the one bullish thing about oil is it is holding this gap, you know, and it's sitting at this 200 day moving average. So if it does come out of it, then that would be something that would get me interested in oil. But really, till we break out of this channel, then that's not something, that's not anything we need to be doing because the worst thing to do is trade something that's stuck inside range, right? That's like, you, you know, you're sitting in the back seat of your buddy's Volkswagen, right? In the middle, right? Next to like two giant dudes, not really that fun, right? There's nothing that we want to be doing on that kind of stuff. So always got to be mindful of these things, you know, the worst thing as traders to do is trade stocks that are stuck inside range. It's the most frustrating thing you can do because you end up like buying high, selling low, shorting low, buying high, and like your whole life is just sitting there in reverse, right? So, you know, this is something to keep an eye on, but in general, right, we're just stuck inside a range and that's a penis in between us for now. Now you can see here like UGA, this is the right ETF that measures gas, but it's still stuck in range, but it is, you know, if it ever comes out of it, that's going to be something that's, you know, that'll be something to be monitoring. But right now we don't have any indication that it is anything like that. But like always, right, right click, 
set some damn alerts and you know go and have some fun over there. Gold miners, right? Gold miners have been on a tear. I think this is something, you know, right now, like you don't want to be chasing this thing, right? You don't want to be chasing this bad boy up all the way. But this is something definitely like we have some level of consolidation, right? Something to just hang our hats on. Then that's something that we want to take a look. So on TC2000 or any charting platform, if you hit the three prong button, right, you'll start to see like, okay, what are the names that are coming in? to the sectors and like what are the names that are inside there so like you can see here you got 28 names inside the gold miner uh index so like if you do a five-day sort right you'll start to see like oh man we got a little right we got a little pizza party happening in some of these names so like this is like you know i think that the gold sector is probably due for a little bit of a pullback so i definitely want to keep a couple of these like if we get a big gap up on these tomorrow for example like i think that would probably set off like a quick counter trend short. Um, a lot of these kind of names don't do enough liquidity for me personally, because I need to get size into my trades, right? So like, you know, if I need to buy like four or 5,000 shares or something or whatever it might be, then, you know, these are like a lot of these just don't have the juice on it. But I think something like, you know, AU or even AEM, if you get a big gap up on all these, like, I think that sets up a, like a nice fade scenario, especially this, like, right, you got a double top, you got a double top on this around the 58 range so like i keep a couple of these on the watch list if you get the get you can see how extended these are right if you get this is a name this is a sector so you have two things you're always watching right long term short term so this is a sector long term intermediate term that we want to be keeping an eye on for longs right especially if you're swing trading day trading but on a short term basis right like for tomorrow tuesday wednesday right these are all like if you start to see a speed up, then we want to be short of this, all right? Like, see this, like, GFI, Girlfriend Experience. Um, this thing's 8 bucks to 14 bucks. It's a damn gold stock. Like, I mean, there's nothing worse than gold stocks. Gold stocks, bank stocks, retail stocks, airline stocks. God, I'm getting old because I hate almost all stocks now, right? <laughs> gold stocks, retail stocks, bank stocks, airline stocks are the worst stocks to trade, like, in the history of man. So... This is another one, right? Like if you get like a, a decent sized gap up on this, like this is going to be right. Like a, a little bit of a rollover candidate. Now this doesn't do the ATR that I personally need to trade stocks. Like probably AEM would be a little bit better because I can get some size into it. But you can see this whole list of these whole list of these things are starting to get a little bit juicy, right? You got like this one specifically that's like sitting here right at resistance too. So keep an eye on these bad boys. You know, I, I would need a speed up. But if we get the speed up on either AU or I think AEM, gap up though, right? When you're going counter trend trading, the hardest thing to do is short it if you see weakness, right? Like, because you just end up going red to green and you're just sitting there, what just happened, right? And so you need that speed up. You need like the gap up to get these parties going. And then like, and then you'll have some fun on this. And so... Wait for the speed up, and then we'll see, like, what the fuck is going now. All right? Now, um, beyond that, let's take a look and see what else we got here. All right? Silver is getting extended. You can see this is XLE, so it's kind of just mirroring the price of oil. That, it's not really my particular flavor, right? This is total range. Nothing worse than range, right? That's the penis in between us right there. IBB, same type of deal. All right, all right. You can see here the Dow Jones is actually... Right, starting to right flag out just a tad over the right over its MAC, over the 50 day moving average, the 90 day moving average, so on and so forth. Like you're starting to build out a little bit here. If you can come out of this range, then you know you'll start to test up into this. And I think that's probably, you know, on a longer term basis, right? We had lower highs, lower highs, lower highs, lower highs, but like these things have been broken. And, you know, this is like it's something that's important for trading, which is like, you know, we have what we believe. Right. In terms of like we read the news and we use common sense and so on and so forth. So we have what we believe, uh, which is like, hey, this market should be fucked. Right. Like, uh, you know, maybe we have a recession or this or that. But right right now, the price action is just telling us like, hey, we're in a short term bullish phase inside a longer term range. And so we have to kind of trade around these things, no matter what we believe. Like I'm an anarchist at heart, you know, obviously being Indian and, you know, watching the colonialists right? Rape and pillage my country of India. You know, like I, I love to see, right? 
I love to see a little bit of destruction. But in general, like we don't always get what we want. And, you know, this is like telling us like we've got we've got other things that are happening that we got to be careful about. We don't want to just be so bearish or whatever and thinking like, yeah, fuck it. Right. Like the world is ending because it's not ending. Right. This is damn America. Right. We always win in the end. We always win even when it looks like we're losing. We're Americans. Uh, spy. So now let's take a look at the spy, right? So the spy itself is also, these are some levels to kind of just keep an eye on. You know, in general, we trade more tech stocks and obviously S&P 500 stocks. But, you know, you can see you've got kind of two spots that I think are going to be really, really important here. You know, if we get, if we can kind of hold this 90 EMA and come out of this zone, then we've got a straight shot into this kind of 14, 15 or 14, 18 zone. Before we really want to look and say like, okay, we want to maybe look for a quick short or something in the market. Right now, at least on a two-week basis, right, we've got we've got a short-term pretty strong trend too. And one of the things like really be mindful of when you're thinking about like market indexes and stuff like that is like in terms of strength, how does the market react to weakness, right? So how does the market react to weakness? We used to see like last year, for example, when the market would roll over, you know, when the market would gap down, we would just keep, keep continuing down. We'd be down like one and a half percent, two percent, you know, so on and so forth. And we keep trending down. But we see this a change in character in the markets, which is, you know, now we started to gap down and the markets have been reversing, right, nonstop. And so you're starting to see, right, like these big time reversals come in. And so that's telling us that the price action of the market has changed, right, considerably. Like I went into Friday, like my man, Three quarters of my damn list was like all shorts, right? Like I was thinking like, look, man, this thing's looking like we could get nasty again. And all of a sudden, right, the market gaps down and completely reverses. And you saw that with, right, so many names like this, like right, Meta and Google and so on and so forth. So the price action of the markets has changed considerably. And we need to just really be a little bit mindful of those things uh, as we go through. Now, let's take a look and see, take a look at the QQQs and see, really where are like the key levels of our day of the market, so on and so forth. So we've got ourselves like, right, we're holding on a little bit of support over here. And now we, what we really need to do is like kind of start to map out like what are, right, what are the sweet spots, you know, in the market? So you can see here, right? Like this is a hourly chart. So we've broken out of this zone and we've kind of come back and retested, you know, into some supports. And so like now, as long as like this zone of support or this demand area starts to hold, you know, then that's actually, right, we've got to give the bulls like the benefit of the doubt, essentially, that the market itself is going to hold. So bullish case, bearish case, neutral case scenarios, right, our bullish case scenarios that we just continue on into the bounce, right, and maybe we run into this kind of 321, 322 zone. Our neutral case scenario would be, Right. And this would mean like we'd have a couple of days of longs, a couple of days of shorts, and we'll have to be a little bit more selective. Our neutral case scenario would be right that the market just kind of ping pongs around between right, just support and resistance. And we just start to build and range. And we've seen a lot of ranging this year. And so, you know, that's also a, a potential probability. And then of course, our bearish case scenario would be right that we lose last week's lows and we start to break under those demand spots. And if that happens, then you know we'll have to get really bearish like we'll have to get bearish really quick and i do like that this i do like that part about this market is that you know like you can flip on a hot second and things can go from bullish to bearish really quick and you can dump all your shit and you know there's enough range there's enough range to go in on beyond that we do have a huge set of news out this coming week right so we've got you know all this CPI, PPI, some minutes. We have a whole host of other things too. So some of that will also move around the markets. Now, CPI, PPI, like these things, they're not moving the markets the way, the way they used to. You know, if you look at like, say, like July, August, September, right? When those CPI numbers came out, the market was gapping up, to, up down like two, 3%. We're not necessarily getting like that kind of crazy reaction um we're in the tail end of right this kind of bear market stuff where these news pieces um get such a big reaction but we still get some and so that'll be something to kind of be mindful of too but really keep an eye on these levels 
if we start to lose last week's lows, then that's where we got to be, right? That's where we're going to have to be a little bit defensive. And then we'll see what's what the fuck is going on. <laughs> we'll, we'll see what's going on. But in general, we've got ourselves a nice look here. And you know what? If you really look at right individual stocks, we've got a lot, a lot of nice looks too. So my, my head and my heart tell me like, let's burn this fucking thing to the ground. But we're not really seeing any evidence that burning to the ground is a good thing or it's going to happen. So book it, right? We'll we'll do what we got to do. Now, uh, beyond that, let's take a look. So now after you look at market indexes, so this is kind of the structure of how you want to always do your scans. You want to do a top-down approach. So you look at the indexes first, right? See where the strength is. Make a bullish, bearish, neutral case scenario for the underlying markets, for your QQQs, your SPIs, your DAOs, and then, of course, like major market indexes that you might be interested in. After that, now you want to start to do run individual scans and start looking for the hot, hot heat, right? What I mean by hot, hot heat is first thing that I want to always do is run our liquid gainer scan. Our liquid gainer scan is just a momentum scan. It's not really anything, right? I just need sometimes, guys, by the way, for those of you guys that like subscribe to like a bunch of like random shit. Us traders, like, we'll just give names to shit to make ourselves, like, look smart. <laughs> like, fucking, there's really nothing to these scans, right? So, like, I call this a liquid gainer scan because, like, one day I was drinking a bunch of wine and I, like, typed something wrong. And then it just ended up being liquid gainers. It used to just be top gainers, right? <laughs> there ain't nothing to these scans, right? Like, when people say, like, hey, I got these algos and stuff like that, like, it's all, like, a little bit of fugazi. Besides Levi, I've never seen anybody actually in the trading business program anything that's not just like a preset thing. Levi is like the first person that I've ever seen actually do it. So let's go in. So first thing we want to do, run our liquid gainer scan and let's go see what's going on over here. So the first thing that pops up is this GFAI. My, my, my thinking is this AI theme is like done for a hot second due to um, just the dump in AI. If this thing is shoved up tomorrow and, you know, like, you know, e -turd and some of these, like, you know, IB heads, the borrows weren't, you could get borrows on this. Uh, if this thing is shoved up tomorrow, like, say you start gapping up into like 14, 15 range, I'm actually thinking this is probably a fader, especially just based off the price action from the last couple of days. Any gap up on this is what we call a sucker's gap. Like, if you, if this thing gaps up, like, we take this thing down, downtown Julie Brown. Like, we got to go and take this thing down. So, like, I'd add this to the watch list for a short, right? For a short, I think that any gap up on this is a sucker's gap. Like, I think this one, and, you know, if we gap up on AI, too, and it may need a decent-sized one, but, like, any kind, you know, mark out your levels on this. So, you get your 50-day moving average here and the higher day here, and so you got a whole load of MAs and, you know, shit like that, but... If you start like pushing into like this zone of love over here, you know, anywhere in here, I'm just drawing lines to make myself look smart, but any kind of push right into this, like that's going to set up a, a, a refade and then the big spot though. So like that sets up a refade and then you don't want to get like crazy, crazy aggressive on this till like, right. You take down this, I'd go with about 20 spot. Right. So like, ideally, like you shove this bad boy up. 24, 25, like let it, let people really get up in it and start believing that this thing is like going to start running again. Let it shove up and then, right, you can start to fizzle this thing out. And then, of course, if it ever does, you know, crack into this kind of 20 spot, man, this 20 has been defended so many times, then you'll start to see a speed up on it. All right, we'd rather always, we don't want to be, you don't want to be the last man to the gangbang, right? You want to be number one, number two three if there's you know some good looking women's in it but you don't want to be like 10 11 12 and so you don't want to wait till 20 we want to get a little bit of a we want to get a little bit of speed up on this bad boy then then we'll come in a little bit hot on this bad boy and we'll see like what's going on so let this thing shove up and then we'll kind of take it back under 20 hopefully pray we get a nice size gap up if you get five six seven eight percent gap up ideally like that's a gimme, that's a gimme right there. So add that to the list. Uh, MSGM. Man, these things always have seemed like they have like one last gasp, right? Like this thing is too thin to be really trading. This thing is thinner than 
our mom's noodle over there like that's thin right <laughs> that man that man's in minnesota just freezing his balls off you know he's half man this time of year this thing is too thin for us even though it did four million shares you can always look at like where the four million shares came in. It really came in like three, four condos. Like who does this shit, right? Like this is not our style of play. Uh, we'll leave that to the pumpers, right? Not just the pumpers, but the pumpers in France. We don't want to even be. We don't want to be even a part of any of this, right? So none of this. Some of these are looking a little bit better, but we need hot, hot heat. So we got AI. Add that to the list. Delo. So Delo was up about seven percent on. Thursday. Yo, this had a nasty drop. I actually think, like, look at how much volume selling was on this. Uh, thir is a 13 spot on the nasty earnings. Like, and you're still under this breakdown spot. Like, I actually think, like, this is something we fade off. Like, we get a we get a pop into, like, 14, 15, something along that end on this bad boy. Um, dude, we could shove this thing off. Let me get to an hourly chart here, a 30-minute chart here. Right, you can see here like the gap spots like around 15, but we shove up into this. Like I think this is when these stocks like just crater like this on earnings, especially one that's been such a big turd. Like you can see here, this thing cratered on earnings like multiple times. If this thing pops up, like we've got ourselves, I think we got ourselves a good God-fearing Christian short right here that we could feel good about. Um, let's uh man, let's put this thing into play. What do you think? Look at it. Look at it. Let's add it. Ah, right. cool, 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 cool. Add it to the list. Leg. PMCI, all right? So this is, man, this thing is too thin, right? 1.2 million shares. So interesting thing is like, you know, my minimum threshold for trading stocks, you know, on the day trade side is like kind of, at least when I'm putting in like the parameters of scans is like, you know, 1 million shares. But like, if you really think about it, like once you get past the point where you're trading even more than like a thousand shares of stuff, dude, one million shares trades real thin. Oh my God, I my experience on. My, my serums are finally dried. Oh yeah. I wanna be trading stocks all day, drinking whiskey at night. And then how on your face look like a catcher's mitt. You gotta put those creams on. These creams, they gotta save you. Right? I'll be like Mark Minervini, like posting those Lambo pictures. He's like seven years old. <laughs> like, you don't wanna do that. <laughs> That's not cool. Heart just rubbing some gin, but like you know, not a, a nasty, but just a bit good clean. Now, let's take a look here. Armand, by the way, what day you do in a webinar this week? Slacking, slacking. See, this is what happens. Armand has a couple big days trading, all of a sudden, he forgets to stop doing webinars for us. Oh, so we're missing out on the heat. All right, John, see this. Ooh. And junk. Junk, 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 junk. You can keep an eye. So I got an alert I set on the CVNA. This thing's a pig. It's probably going to be a zero at some point. But when the market heats up, when the market heats up the way it has been, the biggest pigs, the ones that shouldn't be zeros, they end up like flying around the most. So this um this CVNA. Keep an eye like around these MAs. That's like about 950. And then this 10 spot. Man, if it starts to come out of there, like you've got yourself, obviously, right? This thing was just 20 bucks a couple weeks ago. Like I said, this thing's a zero, most likely. But when the markets heat up, it's about cream of the crap, right? So you want to take the biggest, smelliest pieces of excrement that you have, right? The Nice oily, like sloppy crabs, right? Like you want, you don't want a solid one with S shapes. Like you need a nasty one, and this could be it, right? So if the market starts to heat up, let's add in this one. Like I said, it's a zero. You don't hold it overnight. This is a day trading instrument, and then good. Armand, just give me a date. You want to do Tuesday? We're done. 
<laughs> this ain't France, man. We got rules. Go a long way, man. Back to the big war. Korea. <laughs> we go back, man. It's cool. Let's do it. So add this with the big caveat. It's got to kind of come out of some of these ranges first. But uh, this is a only if the market goes monk. If the market goes monk, then we then we go into some of these kind of names here. Oh, BDA, this is all junk. See this range? No pattern, no pattern, no pattern, no pattern. This is all junk, 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 junk. No pattern. I can see it. See this? This is a nice looker, but like you're on day four of a move, only one million shares volume. Like sometimes some of these are great on paper, but they just don't do the job because they just don't have the liquidity. Cool. I got you set up. Um, just text me like what you want the title to be, and then we'll get it going. Hey, this red fin, I keep drawing, fucking, I draw trend lines in this. I keep redrawing trend lines on this. This is the beauty of trading, right? You look so damn smart because it's always after the fact, right? You just keep drawing trend lines so it works. And so I've been redrawing trend lines on this thing nonstop. But I think, I think we finally got one. I, okay. I've drawn trend, so many trend lines on this bad boy. I'm drawing here, here, here. I'm going to keep redrawing trend lines on this thing until I, I get the big rip that I want. Um, I have like a whole shitload of this in my IRA. Uh, so I've been focused on this forever. I've been I've been adding my IRA for a while, but uh, in my retirement accounts, I have so many of these cheapies. But <laughs> fucking, I've been drawing trend lines on this, convincing myself that I'm gonna <laughs> I'm gonna make a whole shitload of money on this one. But uh, it hasn't gotten there yet. But we're getting there. So we redraw. Let's redraw the trend line one last time, and fucking. This thing gets over like let's say 914, then uh then we'll be good to go. So just be mindful of those kind of things. Um, it's got a good look to it. Right? It's got a good look to it, and then we'll see what the fuck is going on. So uh, that's more of a swing setup for me. Right. Uh, I got this on my swing trade watch list. It's not a day trader, it doesn't do enough liquidity. That looks like a good solid swing trade, though. Like, you know, you've got it's been holding this 50 day moving average like nonstop, right? So, like, there's two aspects of swing trading. You can buy in confirmation, right? When something breaks, but like, usually, once you buy in confirmation, if you're too far into the confirmation, you end up getting smoked because, like, you're right to get the confirmation, you have to pay an insurance, right? Which is via price. Yeah. So, this might be one of those ones you want to be, it's a buy low, sell high kind of candidate, but uh, it's got a good look to it. It looks more like a swing trade than anything. Hey, FRC, I've been staring at these banks and they're burning a lot of mental capital right now, a lot of mental capital, but, right, the big hairy Indian butt is like, this seems like they just, they're not dumping right now at all. So they're not dumping at all right now. Um, we'll have to see like how it reacts around here, but like, and look, this is another one, like, you can fucking redraw these trend lines like as many times as you want. Make them look however you want. That it's all bullshit, you know, for the most part. Like we just do it to look smart on Twitter sometimes. But you can see, I think like the sweet spot. If you can come out of this like kind of fifteen zone, I think it's gonna it's it's probably gonna start to speed up. And then if you know, obviously, if it breaks twelve, then it'll start to speed up. Anything in the middle is just a right. Like it's not gonna give you. It's not going to give you the heat you need. It's going to be too slow. It's going to be too slow. So when you have these kind of things, they always, I've done this so many times in my career where it's like, you see it and you're like, oh man, this is going to be, this is going to be great. Like, it's like, you know, cause like, you're just thinking like, it's going to crash, but it's already crashed, right? Like, look, this thing's 150 bucks. Like it's at 14 bucks. Where's it going to go? But yeah, Maybe zero. It's probably is a zero, right? But it's a matter of like, how much attention does it soak up? How many other opportunities do you miss? Right? How much mental capital are you burning, like staring at this bad boy? Yeah, like it's not really anything, right? So just something to be uh just something to be mindful of. We'll see. I set alert here at 12, set one at 15. And you know, we'll see, like, you know, you can see here this do like. Yeah, they're like 1450. If it starts coming in here, we'll start looking at it. I wouldn't even put this on your watch list. 
It's if it breaks below 12, if it breaks through this 1475, it'll pop up and then we can start digging in a little bit more closely to see if it's worth our time. But let's not blow our mental capital on something like this. It's just not, it's not good bang for the buck, I don't think. All right, relay junk. Hey, this tech nation. Um, if you don't, this is a resource company, so they don't trade that fun, but it's been moving around pretty good. It's got two dollar ETRs, forty dollar stock. It's that's doable. Definitely doable. Um, and you're kind of coming out of range here. It's a little bit. Look, you're not going to get NPCs on this, right? We live for NPCs. We live for M NPCs and NRBs. NRBs, like you can't plan for them, right? Like an NRB is an NRB because it's a no reason donor. But uh, so you can't plan for those. Those are just nice if you get one. But like an NPC, we live for NPCs. And uh, this is not going to give you an NPC. But it can give you a nice like little grinder, trender, like you can see here. Right, you got the trend, a little bit of VWAP hold. This is the right sector too, right? Like kind of metals have been eaten up a little bit. They've been getting a little bit saucy, you know, and you right, you got a couple right narrow range days inside the breakout candle. That's probably um that's probably worth the that's probably worth the look here. Let's add it for now. A red to green on that bad boy. Let's let, let's take a look. Whoa, SCLX. This is a pump and dump. This is no buenos. That is a no buenos. Now look, this giggle. This is nice. It's real nice. This is nice. So you got triple tap breakout. One, two, three. Three types of resistance. You got nine EMA curls for the girls coming up under the damn kitchen on this bad boy. Like this is a hot spot, right? This is a hot spot for red to green. Alvin Duckworth, where you fucking been? What's going on in Texas? If you want to play in Texas, you got to have a fiddle in the band. Man, you people from Texas, man, you guys got it made. Like, you guys, you can walk around like Walmart with your guns. Hey, man, where are you going today? Well, I'm fucking going, I'm riding my horse to fucking Walmart. Hey, man, you better be strapped, man. There's a lot of fucking, fucking shit going on these days, man. Like, you know, hey, man, I got my guns with me. And then you can just, like, man, you got the good music. Man, my sister lives in Fort Worth, so I'm, like, obsessed with Texas. Like, hey, man, I'm just fucking going to the grocery store, man. Hey, don't forget to fucking strap on your guns, man. <laughs> don't forget, man. God damn. You get a nice monster energy drink, some wraparound Oakleys. Man, you get, like, a pickup truck, like, with like a license plate that says like pussy wagon. That, to me, that's Texas right there. Like, man, you get that going, hot damn, you live it, right? Maybe some Crocs. You get some nice Crocs, man. Hey, man. Hey, Jebediah. What you think about, man? Let's go fucking start some trouble, man, at the Piggly Wiggly, man. Fucking get some of these guys, man. I heard there are a couple Indian guys hanging out there, like doing math problems and shit, man. Let's fucking remind them what. Texas is all about, man. Tell them to get back out of there. That's nice. Hey, Ray, what's going on? All right, sorry, sorry. I digress, man. You start getting me going about Texas, it's like, man, we can really get a nice, nice little, nice little love going. So this is a triple tap breakout. I think this is probably the 48 million shares in volume. Yeah, this is probably number one for tomorrow. Um, most likely, like, and you can roll like this is like a prime time thing. You can roll the options contracts on these. Um, man, they fly. Like you see here, like you know, like on the ORB. You know, if you start to take it like on the ORB, because it's you know a little bit slower. But you take this thing on the ORB over here, man. Like you can. That's that's some good chatters right there, right? That's some good chatters right there. Like you take that. Uh, you take that on a little ORB or something like that. That's a nice breakout. You can roll in the calls on them. I always do the in the money for the most part, at least from what I noticed that Levi does. Um, you can roll with something like that. That's fucking nice. Real. That's nice. Or real nice. Hey, I got this TTD on watch list too. If it takes out this kind of 61, 62 zone of laws, 
Like that thing is, I think he's ready to party. What do you think? I mean, you got good range on this. You go 57, 61. Hey, this is a primetime candidate. You get a week open on this bad boy. You get a week open on this bad boy. Holy, we go red to green. We play for the breakout on this. I think we've got ourselves. This has got a good ATR on it, two bucks, 60. It'd be nice if had a little bit more. I think the ATR will expand once you get out of this range. But did I? If you won't want to play in Texas, you got to have fit on the band. All right, all right. Now, add it. Flag. Um, flag the Google, too. Google flag. TTD. Flag. Yeah, you can see this is the regular Google. Why they split the fucking thing up into two tickers is beyond me. Never understood it, but whatever. I usually just go with the Google L versus the Google. Because it's just got more liquidity, but uh, it's the same shit. I don't know why they did that. Hey, Pac W, this is another one of these banks, right? Like you can see here, it's been get rejected by the 90 EMA, 90 EMA, 90 EMA. If it ever kind of crosses out of this range, it, it might pick up some steam. But this is just another one. Like, is this really? You don't have like a clearly defined level on this, so you don't necessarily like. In absence of news, like I don't know if these things are just gonna like rip because they're cheap. Like cheap can get cheaper for you know long periods of time. This is not really. I don't know if that's got the heat for us, right? You can see here, Cree like Cree did fake breakdown so many damn times. I was ready for it. I was like getting excited about it, but you know in the end, like it kind of turned into like inverse head and shoulder. So go fucking figure, right? So. I think these are like, you know, in the absence of news, like they're like a watch, but it's something to stay familiar with. It's not something something you put some alerts on, but it's like not something you're going to sit there and be like, hey, like this is our, da -da 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 -da, you know, so on and so forth. It's not there yet. Warby Parker, fuck those guys. Hey, this pins, like for those of you guys that are swing traders, this might be something. This is not a good day trader, this stock, but this is for those of you guys that are swing traders. This is a big long base. You know, if you really look here, like let's take a look at like, the weekly chart on this. It's a really big long base that's like been developing over here. I got uh, some alerts set on this. Like to me, this is more of like an IRA type of trade. You got this epic base, right? Tech stocks have been healing, right? You start to get a little bit of trend in, right? The NASDAQ and so on and so forth. This is probably. I think this is probably a more of a swinger if it kind of clears out of this range. You know, if anything, like in this type of market, too, swing trading is a little bit trickier. I'd almost let it break and then like come back and retest and see if it holds if you want to hold it for more than a couple of days. So in swing trading, guys, for those of you guys that are swing trading, when you hit the break, you got to sell them basically a couple days. Like there's no such thing as like 10 day swing trades right now for the most part. Or you can let it break and see if it pulls back and holds. And then like you can load in and, you know, you'll get a little bit of confirmation. But otherwise, don't even worry about it too much. But this is something I got on my watch list for like an IRA type of trade. Um If the market being the location it is, you know, and like a lot of, you know, a lot of these stocks, they've come far off their bottoms, but they're still right, like really far from their all time highs. You know, any kind of significant pullbacks or big base breakouts, like, you know, there are things that you want to be at least kind of mindful of. First, sir, fuck these guys. They use them for our payment processing. And BMR, as so you can see here, you got a breakdown, pullback too thin. If you want to play in Texas, you got to have fit on the band. You can see here. See, this is another regional bank. It's just stuck in a box. Like, there's not much you can do till this box resides itself. And even when the box resides itself, it may be still slow because they're banks. Banks only have range in times of big crisis. But otherwise, like, they don't trade for shit. They really don't. So just be kind of mindful of that. Um, it's a no buenos.
Yeah, leave it alone. Higher max. See, this is nice, like a breakout pullback. Like that's probably more of a swing trade setup than a day trade setup, though. Like sound, junk, 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 junk. All right, cool, cool. Now let's take a look. So let's take a look and just see kind of if there was any stocks taking a shit on Friday. Uh, maybe we get some day two plays. See this like Levi Strauss. Yeah, it's like big nasty, right? Pull on earnings. This type of stock is like a prime time candidate. Like if you get a decent sized gap on this tomorrow to the upside, right? We could probably flip this up for a green to red. Um, you you jam this thing up into like 15, 16. We could flip this bad boy over for a green to red, like add that to the list. Or then the volume. I parts. This is a pump and dump. Fuck that thing. Oh, last from the past. See, this is another one, right? You got like you get earnings out. You got all these downgrades, like all this kind of stuff happening. Um, this is another one. See, Lumita shares tumble along revenue outlook on late customer order cancellations. Um, this is a prime time candidate. If it pops up, let's say 47, 48, we, um, fade this bad boy. That's nice. Pop up, fade it. Let's add that to the list, peoples. All right, all right. SMCI, no pattern. Ooh. See this? This is probably got a, this is probably got some juice for a day too. But it's a bank. You just don't have enough don't have much juice on it. But it did have a two dollar ATR on Friday. Like it's doable. Only one point eight million shares. Like if you're trading, I would say like I actually like this setup. If you're trading less than like say two thousand shares at a time. You can probably you can shred this thing, you know, for the breakdown. If you're trading more than that, it's going to be a little bit of liquid, like it might not be worth your time. Airbnb is getting shit on, but it's at the 200 day moving average. This actually, you know, you may get a little bit of bouncy McGee on it, but once again, this is a stock that's stuck in range, right? That's the penis in between us. Backseat of your buddies, Volkswagen. Like, do you really want to? Do you really want to roll with that? Probably not. Look that thing. What's this? That's a nice breakout. Whoop. Look, yeah, not. Look at that shit. Yo, this is not so bad. Right? Now, my only worry on this is, like, this is probably better for, like, a Tuesday short than uh, a Monday short because you're already on day three. When you think about, like, stocks, like, they move in, they move in three to five day bursts, right? What we'd call, like, a momentum burst. So, like, once you're, if you're depending on a day four to, like, pay you for the day, that ain't going to work, right? Like, day four is day four. So, that's not going to work. So, like, this is, like, a nice, this is a nice setup. But, like, it's something, like, you know, ideally you get, like, a pop-up or an inside day. And then you take it on Tuesday, you know, on an inside day setup. That's a much easier than, like, trying to, trying to jam, trying to jam it in on, a, you know, day four. It's a fake earning breakout. Fuck that thing. All right, cool. So let's get into the faves here just while we're here, right? GFAI. If this thing jams up, and it, it might gap up tomorrow, right? You get into 14, 15. Like, I think we look to fade this. Go on e turn IB in the morning. Make sure you reserve your shares. You know, all that kind of fun stuff. Man, you jam this thing up too. Let We'll have to let it fizzle out. I'm thinking 24 or 26 is going to be the ideal spot. We let it thing fizzle out. And then, of course, you know, it's really game on at 20. Elo, gap up, green to red. We'll all be familiar with. Baba, put this on. This and Google are the top four large caps, all right? 
You, you see here, like Baba and Friday, just like it was a little bit tricky at the open, held the red to green spot, and then really, man, it really shredded. You can see here, like even if you were doing, you see you're playing like the hundred calls or whatever. Like you had some fucking fucking shatters on these things, right? Two, um, and these are the fourteens. Like if you were doing the six, uh, they were up like five hundred percent, thousand percent, something like that. Like you could come in. <laughs> That's a good God fearing Christian fun right there. Um, so Baba, top of the list. Tech Nation, this is a good green to red to green. Google red to green. TTD, red to green, and break the trend line. Pack W, be familiar with, but this is not something, especially for those of you guys that have low attention spans, don't even keep this on your list. I'll, that's what you pay me for, right? I'll watch it, but uh, I don't think you need to necessarily keep this on your list because it's just going to be, it's going to be slow. Unless the range breaks up or down, like it's not, and my guess is if it breaks down, it's going to be a fake breakdown. Um, it's not really worth your time. Hey, one thing, if cryptos, uh, crypto stocks stay hot, this BTBT has got a trend line break too. All these crypto stocks, like they've had, you know, when they start to break, they can get a little bit juicy. Um, would need a lot of liquidity to get this party going, but I like it, I like it, I like it. If it breaks and BTC Ethereum is hot, right? So you need kind of, it's like a triple confirmation. Now you got to double bag it. I want to love this chunk here. Microsoft also is another one, right? This is probably a red to green candidate. Like, look at the range on the 10 points range. That's nice. My only worry with Microsoft is like it's got a little bit more of a resistance spot here. Um, frankly, if the market decides to fade off, then it's got a good level too. Willio, you had a light kind of dead cat bounce on Thursday after the big breakdown. And this is what I mean by like trying to short on day four. See, so one day, two day, three days down, right? So when you get three big days down, if you're coming in hot on day four, like it never works. But like what often happens, you need like an inside day and then it does. So if the market rolls and this is market specific, then we can short this piggy. And um, you can see you're right at the resistance spot on this one. You know, we can short this piggy if the market rolls. That's a nasty looking chart. Um, ZS is another one to add to your short watch list here. You have one, two, three days down. That's why you don't want to be shorting on day fours, right? Day fours, day fives, always. And also on the upside, remember the stocks make three to five day momentum bursts. But if you are buying, like say you're on the long side, you're a swing trader or day trader, and this is intraday or long, you know, on daily chart, and you're buying the fourth green candle, fifth green candle, you're the sucker. You're the sucker. And the same thing when you're shorting. If you're shorting the fourth green candle, fourth red candle, fifth red candle, you're the sucker. You're chasing it. So usually what you need is just like a sideways candle. And then, right, that allows the stock to take a breather. It allows it to have some rest. And then you can come in, right, and take this. So this is on top of the short list if we need a short, right? Like, don't, just because there's a lot of bullish looking stocks doesn't mean, right, we can't, we can only have a watch list of longs. This S looks like a swing trade setup. Right, especially if it starts to kind of the confirmation would be here, right? 17 and some change. Uh, if that happens, like it's running in probably 21 pretty quickly. Um, this thing used to be 95 bucks. Like this type of setup has been working very well in the market, too. IONQ for those of you guys that like cheapies, this one, this move right here was on earnings, and now you're starting to build out a little bit of a flag. Um, this is probably something it might need another day or two, but. I think this is going to be just due to liquidity and right how beaten down it is. This is probably something in the next week or two. You just want to keep it on your list every day. Like this thing is, this thing's got some juice to it, right? You got 30 million, first of all, 30 million, 35 million shares, 20 million share days. Like that's, that's some good, that's, that's some good liquidity right there. Add that. Meta is another one, red to green on this one. Look at this thing. Yeah, I was fucking around with these on the red to green spot, the 211, yeah, the 211 contracts and stuff. Of uh, on the, the April 6th one, dude, they were flying so fast. Fucking <laughs> thing, they were flying so damn fast. The the 14s didn't move up as much, but the the sixes, man, they were up like 500, 600 percent. Granted, I pikered everything, 
bucks. This is what Kenny did. Hiker is my middle name, right? My middle name is not Demont. My name is Canal Piker Desai, but whatever. Money's money, and you take it when you get it. This is nice. So red to green on this one, too. This is probably after Google. Google, Meta, like these are... These are shredders, all right? You know, the rest of this shit is okay. And then on the short side, right, we got Light, Levi, ZS. Oh, I added Upwork, too. Upwork had an inside day on Friday, uh, right? You get the nasty, right, breakdown day. And then you had an inside day. A little bit of a rest day because this was day four, too. I think this is probably... Right, if we need a little bit of a fader, we can take that one too. Okay, nice. Anybody got any questions? Anybody got any tickers they want to look at? If you want to play in Texas, you better have a fiddle on the mind. Uh, let's take a look. Justin, what's up, baby? Roblox. Yeah, so Roblox you can keep on the watch list too. Right, you get breakout, pull back into the breakout spot. Um, I'd roll with it. Yeah, keep it. What else? What else? Cree. Oh, hold on. Go to. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Yeah, you can't. But look, day one, day two, day three, day four, day. Five. I mean. Yeah. You really get short that thing out of day seven, Armand? After everything I taught you, all the love I give you, how I embrace you inside my bosom, your head there, the mentor. Can you tell me you want to short this thing out of day seven? Very bad. Very bad, Armando. Armando, you are a dirty boy. Yo, I think I see, you know, after that hit piece is like digested it, but it's just stuck in range. This is like the ultimate frustration zone, right? Because it's like the last five days, it's, if you didn't see this far, you would think it's a bull flag. But if you saw the long term, you said it's a bear flag. And it's, I think that's a penis in between us right there. I, I, I think it's a leave alone. You got easier plays out there, way easier plays. What, That makes sense on uh, SQ. Like, see the range of this bad boy, right? So this is let's go to like a thirty minute chart, right? You're like just stuck there, and on the daily chart you're in no man's land. Like the gap's been filled, so like kind of the upside catalyst is gone, but then like the market's been bullish. It's there's too many cross currents on this one. What I would do personally um, is set an alert at 66. Set an alert at 66. If it breaks below and you start to see it build and develop, then start looking at it. So this is what I mean by like having a proper way to organize your alerts. Something doesn't have to be on your watch list. You can use alerts that say like, hey, if it gets over this or gets over this, then I'm interested, right? So like, you know, just set an alert. If, don't even put it on your watch list. If it gets near 66, take the alert and then you can look at it and see if it's a little bit more enticing. Otherwise, fuck it. Two birds on a bucket? Fuck it. Does that make sense? Good, let me see AMD. So AMD has been was under pressure a little bit because um, there was like some European news like for a chip sack. And so, like, even though the market was shredding, it's kind of been, it's been acting a little bit funky. Uh, I'm having trouble on this one, like, dissecting, kind of, I'm just having trouble on this one, like, kind of figuring out where, is this, like, a little bit of a head and shoulders almost, or is it just, like, a dip by? So I have it on my watch list. I set an alert around 88. If it gets to 88, I'm going to look at it. 
and see how the short-term price action is uh, acting around that 88 spot. And, you know, if it's starting to look like and give us signs of a reversal, then I'm interested in it. If it does not, right, if it does not, then we just leave it alone. It's a, it, you know, then it's a no man's land. Does that make sense? Because the biggest thing is when you're day trading or doing swing trades, right, you want to base your patterns around like key inflection points. And also look like all these stocks went monster, right? Monster runs on Friday off the dips. And this thing couldn't even go red to green. Like it's like it tapped down and just kind of struggled right at the red to green spot the whole day. So like, you know, just leave it, al leave it alone until it proves itself. Either till the momentum starts to cruise back up to the upside, maybe it remounts these MAs, or, you know, you come back down into 88 and start to monitor it, right? Start to look and see on a short-term basis if there are signs of a reversal, right? A one, two, three pattern, W pattern, you know, um, anything along that end, uh, I think would do it. Jotin! Jotin Kaka! Yes, you got a little, this is a little bit of a slower stock, obviously, but you have a push and a pullback, but it's like still in range. This to me is like not as hot as like a meta or something. You know what I mean? Like this is, it's okay, but it's like not. Does that make sense? Like I just, this is a tweener. Like there are sometimes guys that stocks are just tweener. They don't have to be longs or shorts. Yeah, not everything is a longer short. So it's like, you know, okay, you look at a stock, right? And you're like, is this a buy, right? We want to force ourselves on this stock. Like, is this the buy? Like, I want to buy this. So I'm like, we're inventing reasons or we're like inventing, right? Something to get into it. But oftentimes the stock is just a stock. Like it may not be a long, it may not be a short. It just may be there. I think this is one of those ones. Like it's just there, but it's not necessarily anything. Does that make sense, Jatin? Jatin Kaka! Let me see PayPal. Hold on, brother. Yeah, PayPal's in range too, man. This is penis in between us. You, you know, you got better. I think we got better. Like, see this one, UNH. I, I, I'd take a pass on UNH. Like, you're up 60, 70 bucks in the 200 day moon average into the last few days. Like, eh. Right? Not our particular flavor. Good. Let me see. Uh, Roku is a pig, too. This is like in the range, too. This is actually the ultimate pig. Every time I thought this was a long, it's to roll over. And every time I can think this thing's a short, it rolls back over the other thing. This thing is such a pig. It, there's no describing. There's no describing the the nastiness of this damn thing. Yeah, glitch out. Yeah, I'm on a laptop life a little bit. I had to switch out computers today. Yeah, Jotin Kaka. If you want to play in Texas, you better have a fiddle in the band. Yeah, FSLR, Kush Babu. Inside day after three day dump. See how like it, it ran right in the lower Bollinger band right here. If you need a short, it might. I don't. The long term chart on this is still bullish, and the short term chart. The intermediate term trends are flat on it. This to me is trickier. I've often seen these because we're just looking at the last couple days and we think like, wow, like that's a short, right? Because we're just looking at the last couple days. And then that like just completely romps to the upside because the the big picture is so bullish. 
I feel like this is could be one of those trap scenarios, right? Like this move here was on earnings and it moved a lot. It went from 155 to 225. So it's going to have like a decent size pullback. Like it just because it didn't break out here does not necessarily mean like the structure of this has changed. Does that make sense? It feels like that feels like a trap to me. Tesla, I think, is Tesla's in range on a short term basis. You're at some support. Intermediate, long term basis, you're stuck in range. So you can take that one however it is. I think like you should bounce up, you should hold at this 180. If it doesn't hold 180, then you know back to 164, but it's down four days in a row. Um, one thing to be mindful of is the price action. Tesla was no good on Friday. Um, it barely held the red to green spot while the rest of the fucking market was shredding. Even Bobo is going five points. This thing never moves. Um, uh, right? The Google, right? Look at the range on these names, right? So these things are flying. And like Tesla, like right, the short term price action was like it held the support, like we were looking to buy it at this 180 spot. Um, and so they have a little bit of pop up that, but right, no follow through. So Tesla, it's at a bounce spot, but the big hairy Indian but is that it just did not have any strength on a relative strength basis. Like it was, it finished down on the day, right? Well, the rest of the market was shredding. So this is probably a read and react play for tomorrow. Good. Anybody else getting questions? Oh, BRZ. Let me see. Snow. Hold on, brother. Hey, Mr. Williamson. What's going on? How are you? So look, Mr. Williamson, snow is a little bit tricky, right? Snow's a little bit tricky. Your you had like a little bit of run, ran on Twitter, Dave Moore and I was not pulled back. So it's just a sandwich, right? It's like a sandwich in between this stuff. This is like, it's no man's land. It's no man's land, right? Like see this like big gelatinous range on this bad boy? Like there's, there's better ways to spend your money in life, right? There's gotta be, right? So like you're just stuck in this range here. Like that's, that to me is frustration, right? That to me right there is like being best friends, like with a hot girl and like doing nice things for her, hoping she'll notice you someday, right? I'm like your best friend, like maybe she'll like stop banging all these like athletes and stuff. Never works out, right? <laughs> you just can't be the best friend. And this is, this is that kind of frustration right there. You don't want to even go with that. Does that make sense, sir? Cool. Now, let's take a look at Snappy Chats. Good, 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 good. Hey, so this is also, right, like you're really stuck in a range here. You're going to have trouble with this one. So look, you're under like it's MAs. So moving averages don't actually matter when you're in a non-trending vehicle. What I mean by that is like moving averages serve two purposes. They help you identify trends on specific time frames, and they act as support and resistance. But that can be X'd out if it's in a non-trending environment or a non-trending stock. Meaning if a stock is just going sideways, all the moving averages will just like go sideways too. And so they will act, it'll basically be like they're invisible. And I, you're in that kind of scenario on this. It's a thick stock, a 2 billion share float. It barely moves like 50 cents a day. I think you just got easier plays than this, but this is a, this is a nasty little range and it's got no rhyme or reason to it. Pass and pass hard. AR51, what's up, baby? 
Amen. Look, Amen has been reversing, but like you don't want to short this on the day four, right? Like I think tomorrow you don't want to short. This is just not the market to do it. Like when we were in the bear market, you know, you know, day four, okay, right? But like now that the market's changed a little bit, shorting something that's like near support on a day four of a move, because we've already three big down moves, right? So like if this thing gaps down, like say it gaps down tomorrow and you're like, you're, you're hitting like a 110 spot, uh, most likely like it's going to bounce a little bit. Fuck Sava. Sava's too thin for us, KD. Kush Babu, it's too thin. 400,000 shares in volume. Like, we can't do that. Like, the spread on this is going to be huge. It's going to be bigger than the gap on your team. Even though, even though I find those endearing. <laughs> Guys, <laughs> He's one of my students. I don't just talk to people like that. That's fine. <laughs> hey, thank you, Gmog. Hey, Glitch Baby. I think the Roblox is a bullish stock. Um, this is definitely one of those I kind of keep an eye on. You know, you have some levels over here that it should, it could take out. I, I, I'm a believer in this one. Yeah, I want to... Good. Anyway, Air 51, what's up, baby? It was all right. But it's, and you're on like kind of support here. Fucking arranged. I wouldn't be surprised to see this thing drift back up to 64 just because of the rest of the semis. Uh, if the rest of the semis do, not the easiest play, but it's, it's there. You could. You could play that back into it. Oh, shit. I didn't even see that. Yeah. I guess you're already there. 7% though. That's Emmy's a thick little bastard. Like you you can't chase a 7% gap up on Emmy ever. It's so thick. Keep it on the list, but I, I will maybe over the coming days. If you want to play in Texas, you got to have a fiddle in the band. Yeah. All right, all right. Anybody else got any questions? Speak now or forever hold your peace. Shred tomorrow, by the way. Yeah, and guys, uh, all you chat room guys, remember we got, if you need to renew, we got Easter specials, chat room, swing trading options. For those guys um, that have been with me a while, probably you want to at least learn a couple of uh, Levi's tricks in the options room. He's got some good stuff. And then we start class, um, we start class, what, April 20th? I mean, a lot of you guys have been in, this, I think we're doing, this is a boot camp, 65. So 65, 60 day boot camps is 3,000 in many days of teaching class. I'm pumped for the next one. We shred. Good, 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 good. If you want to play in Texas, you got to have fit on the buy-in. All right. Well, let's go do what we do, guys, man. As always, I appreciate it. I'll make sure to post a, a, I'll post a watch list and stuff in Discord. Um, I'll narrow this down a little bit too, and I'll rate them for kind of like what's best top five, right? Um, because there's too many. Yeah, some of these I would keep all these bank ones. So I'll keep all the bank ones off. I'll watch them myself. I've got the mental bandwidth to do that. And then, you know, some of these kind of other like, you know, these metal ones and stuff like that. I think we could probably. They're a little bit lower lower level, but I'll watch them. I set alerts for a lot of this stuff. So anything that needs alerts, 
you guys don't have to watch it. I'll watch it and I'll let you know, like during the chat, you know, on Zoom tomorrow, if we start getting close. Google, Baba, some of those bad boys, right? AI, those, we want to keep them on our six windows watch list, right? So always, right, you want to narrow like your stock list down, right? The six, the six beautiful, six beautiful names, <laughs> right? Meta is another one. Um, we'll, we'll shred all these bad boys too, all right? So I love you guys. Yeah, we want to get we'll narrow them down to six. So I probably, you know, I don't think Tesla's worthy of the six, but the Meta, Baba, AI, we go Baba, right? Meta, the Googlers, right? The Googlers. Um, and you can do the offshoots of AI too, like, you know, sound had a gap up. I think we can start some of these bad boys. A long term AI stuff is cool, but there's not really any AI companies out right now. Like Microsoft seems to be the only one. And then there's like a bunch of these fake ones. Like I use somehow or SoundCloud or whatever it is. They're not fucking AI. <laughs> hey, I, you know what? I was watching Skills on. Um, who said Skills? Yeah, I was watching Skills yesterday on Friday. It had a volume pop on it too. Do you like these pennies? Um, that's probably worth a worth a shot, Tobias. Good eye, by the way. Very good eye. Good. All right, goofies. I love you guys, man. Let's go do what we do. We get up bright and early, and we shred tomorrow. All right? Peace in the Middle East. If you want to play in Texas, you got to have a fiddle on the bar.